In this module, we will focus on image histograms. Histograms are a basic tool in image processing and can be used for various purposes such as image enhancement and image segmentation. At the end of this session, you will be able to define what is an image histogram and how it is created from an image, understand the importance of image histograms in image processing, and be familiar with basic image histogram operations, in particular equalization and matching. In this module, we restrict our discussion to gray level images. For example, an image with gray levels between 0 and 255. We call the range of possible gray values the dynamic range of the image. It is important to note that the same principles and techniques reviewed here can be easily expanded to other types of imagery, for example, color images. Consider these two variations of the same satellite image. Which image has better quality? Which image seemed to provide a better view of the scene? Image A on the left is not as clear as image B on the right, since it does not highlight details. Instead, areas in the image seem to have very little variation in gray levels. On the other hand, the image on the right is more crisp and conveys much more detail due to the relatively high variations in gray levels. As can be seen from this example, when similar gray levels are used throughout the image, the image quality appears to be degraded, while when different gray levels are used in the image, then the image quality appears to be enhanced. Our conclusion from this example is therefore that the relative abundance of different gray levels has a direct impact on the quality of the image as perceived by the human visual system. But how can we quantify and explore the abundance of different gray levels in a given image? From this quantification, how can we identify situations where the perceived image quality is low? Furthermore, how can we manipulate the abundance of different gray levels to improve the overall image quality? The answer to these questions lies in the image histogram. This leads to the question, what is an image histogram? Given a digital image with gray levels from 0 to L, where L is the maximum gray level, for example 255, the histogram of the image is a representation of the frequency of occurrence of each gray level in the image. In other words, the histogram is a tool that enables us to answer the following question. Given a gray level image, how many pixels are there for every gray level? Note that the term frequency of occurrence relates here to the number of pixels at each gray level. This should not be confused with other frequency related terms in image processing, such as frequency domain processing. It is also worth mentioning that the image histogram considers only the values of pixels and does not consider the spatial arrangement of pixels in the image. How is an image histogram generated? Essentially, this is an iterative process that involves finding and counting all the pixels that have the first possible gray level in the image, and then repeating this process for all remaining gray level values. The process is implemented by iterating through all possible gray level values. For each gray level value, counting the number of pixels in the image that have that value, and finally, storing the results in a table or displaying it in a chart. Once the histogram is calculated, it can be represented in two ways. As a table of numbers, where the first column in the table corresponds to the gray level values in the image, and the second column in the table corresponds to the number of pixels in the image that have that gray level, respectively. Or, as a chart, 
typically a bar chart in which each bar corresponds to a gray level and the height of the bar corresponds to the number of pixels having that gray level. To illustrate this, consider the image on the right. This image has five rows and five columns and therefore has 25 pixels. In this image, there are two gray levels, zero represented by black and one represented by white. To demonstrate how the image histogram is constructed and represented, we will organize our results in a table and a chart. The table has two columns, namely gray level and the corresponding frequency, while in the chart the x-axis represent the gray level and the y-axis represents the frequency. It is worth noting the correspondence between the gray level column of the table and the x-axis of the chart. And similarly, the correspondence between the frequency column of the table and the y-axis of the chart. As we know already, the gray level values that exist in the image, we can write them in ascending order in the gray level column of the table and as labels in the x-axis of our chart. Now, let us begin the histogram generation process. As we explained before, the process of generating the histogram involves iterating through all possible gray levels in the image and for each gray level counting the number of pixels in the image that have this gray level value. Since our image has only two gray levels, the histogram generation process requires only two iterations. Let us begin. In the first step, we count the number of pixels with the gray level 0. This gray level is represented by the black color in our image. As you can see, there are 8 pixels with this gray level in our image. We record this result by populating the frequency column cell in the table that corresponds to gray level 0 with the number 8. We also update our chart by plotting a bar at gray level 0 with a height of 8. In the second step, we count the number of pixels with the gray level 1. This gray level is represented by the white color. As you can see, there are 17 pixels with this gray level in our image. We record this result by populating the frequency column cell in the table that corresponds to gray level 1 with the number 17. We also update our chart by plotting a bar at gray level 1 with a height of 17. Since there are no more gray levels in the image, the process ends here. It should be noted that if the dynamic range of the image was higher, for instance, an image with 256 gray levels, the process would be continued until the frequency of all gray levels was computed. Although this is not a required step, it is advisable to verify our counts to ensure we did not make a mistake. A simple way to do that is to sum all the elements of the frequency column, which should add up to the total number of pixels in the image. The total of the frequency column in our table is 25, the same as the total number of pixels in our image. This provides reassurance that no mistake was made during the histogram generation process.
Now that we understand how the image histogram is generated, let us explore the importance of the image histogram as an image analysis and enhancement tool. To do this, we will focus our discussion on the chart representation of the histogram. As we will show, once the histogram is created, a quick review of the shape of the histogram provides valuable information with respect to the overall image quality and, in particular, the overall contrast and brightness of the image. Furthermore, once the histogram is generated, it is possible to change and manipulate it to improve the overall image quality. To demonstrate these principles, consider the following examples. In all these examples, a satellite image of the Washington DC area was used. This satellite image contains 256 gray levels, ranging from 0 to 255. Consider case A. In this case, the image histogram on the left is concentrated at low gray values and is narrow and not well spread throughout the dynamic range of the image. As a result, the image on the right is very dark and has poor contrast. In contrast to case A, in this case, case B, the image histogram on the left is concentrated at high gray levels and is narrow and not well spread throughout the dynamic range of the image. As a result of that, the image on the right is very bright and again has poor contrast. In case C, the image histogram on the left is concentrated in the middle of the dynamic range of the image. However, it is very narrow. As a result, the image on the right is not too bright and not too dark. However, it does exhibit poor contrast. Finally, in case D, the image histogram on the left is wide and well spread throughout the dynamic range of the image. As a result, the image on the right is not too dark and not too bright and offers good contrast. From these examples, we can therefore conclude that the examination of the overall shape of the histogram is a valuable tool in determining whether the image is too dark or too bright and whether the image is likely to have good or poor contrast. Now that we have an understanding of the relationships between the image histogram and the overall image quality in terms of contrast and average gray level, we turn to review two methods for image enhancement through histogram processing. The first method we review is histogram equalization. Histogram equalization modifies the values of pixels so that the number of pixels at each gray level will be approximately the same. In many cases, this type of histogram modification will increase the image contrast and bring the average gray level of the image close to the middle of the dynamic range, therefore improving the overall image quality. A key advantage of the equalization process is that it can be performed completely automatically without any human input, therefore providing an automated mechanism for image enhancement. It is important to note that while equalization will not always result 
in an improved image quality, the process does generally perform well under normal conditions. To demonstrate the effect of histogram equalization on image quality, let us explore how this process affects two of the cases we examined earlier. The image on the left is the image used in case A before histogram equalization. The image on the right is the same image after applying histogram equalization. As can be seen, the improvement, both in terms of the contrast and in terms of the overall image brightness, is evident. To further illustrate the benefits of histogram equalization, let us explore how this process affects the image we used in case B. The image on the left is the image used in case B before histogram equalization. The image on the right is the same image after applying histogram equalization. Once again, the improvement both in terms of contrast and in terms of the overall image brightness, is evident. To understand why the histogram equalization process provides such a significant improvement, let us explore the histogram of the image used in case A before and after the application of histogram equalization. The chart on the left shows the histogram of the image used in case A before the equalization process. The chart on the right shows the histogram of the image used in case A after the histogram equalization process. Comparing the two histograms reveals why improvement occurs in the image. The histogram equalization process attempts to allocate the same number of pixels to each possible gray level in the dynamic range of the image, therefore enhancing contrast, or the difference between gray levels, and bringing the average gray level close to the center of the dynamic range. This redistribution of pixels across the dynamic range typically results in the enhancement of the image. The second histogram processing tool introduced in this module is histogram matching. Histogram matching modifies the histogram of one image so that it would resemble the histogram of a second image. This type of processing is particularly useful when it is necessary to combine images together, for example in an image panorama or in an image mosaic. While histogram matching can be easily performed by a modern computer, generally histogram matching involves more computations than histogram equalization. To illustrate why histogram matching is necessary, consider the following example from Google Earth. In this example, several satellite images were combined together into a mosaic so that a complete coverage of the scene would be available. However, since this mosaic was created from various images that were collected at different times of the year, each image has its own histogram and the difference between these histograms is evident in the contrast and average brightness of each image. These differences are picked quickly by the human visual system, which is sensitive to sharp variations in brightness and contrast. From an image analysis perspective, such sharp differences can be a significant problem, since sharp variations in the mosaic may be misinterpreted as physical boundaries in the scene. The resulting mosaic therefore looks fragmented and the transitions between images in the mosaic is not seamless. Histogram matching aims to mitigate this issue 
by transforming the histogram of one image, named the base image, to be similar to the histogram of a second image, named the target image. To demonstrate this process, let's examine together the following example. Let us consider two images of the same scene. Image F, which was taken when the scene was well illuminated, for example at noon, and image G, which was taken when the scene was not well illuminated, for example during late afternoon. In this example, Image G, shown on the right, is the base image, and image F, shown on the left, is the target image. Our goal in this example is to match the histogram of image G to the histogram of image F, so that the two images will have similar histograms. The characteristics of image F and image G are evident in the image histograms. The histogram of image F spans throughout the dynamic range of the image, resulting in good average brightness and high contrast. On the other hand, the histogram of image G is concentrated in the lower half of the dynamic range of the image, resulting in a darker image and poor contrast. To match the histogram of image G to the histogram of image F, we apply a matching process in which a transformation of gray levels is derived so that the differences between the two histograms, that of image F and image G, will be minimized. Histogram matching, therefore, involves an optimization process and is therefore more demanding computationally. It is important to note that since an optimization process is applied, and due to the nature of this process, the histogram of image G after the matching process may not be completely identical to the histogram of image F. Having said that, the histogram of image G after the matching process will resemble the histogram of image F, resulting in an image that is visually very similar to image F. The results of the histogram matching process are shown here. On the left, image F, and on the right, image G after histogram matching. As you can see, this result is very similar visually to image F on the left, as both images have a similar average gray level and contrast. In fact, in this case, finding any differences between the images by visual inspection alone would be a challenging task. Let us now examine the histogram of image G after applying the histogram matching process. This histogram is shown on the right. Compare this histogram to the histogram of image F shown on the left. As mentioned before, the matching process does not guarantee that the two histograms would be identical. However, the two histograms do share similar trends in terms of their overall shape and in terms of the distribution of the number of pixels throughout the dynamic range. This overall similarity results in an image that is visually very similar to image F. Let us now summarize what was discussed in this module. First, we defined what an image histogram is, we explored how an image histogram is created, and we reviewed how an histogram can be represented. Following this, we demonstrated the importance of the image histogram as an analysis tool and as an image enhancement tool. In particular, we explored how the relationship between the shape of the histogram and the dynamic range of the image impact both image brightness and image contrast. We then reviewed histogram equalization as an automated tool 
to enhance image quality. Finally, we reviewed the histogram matching process as a tool for enhancing the similarity between images. Tools such as the histogram equalization and matching are essential in digital image enhancement.